There's something happening in the Irish countryside that we should all be aware of, and that is wildlife being exposed to rat poisons or rodenticides. And unfortunately, there are situations where the control of rodents is necessary, but the way we go about that can have a detrimental effect on our wildlife. Rodenticides are the most common and also the most effective means of controlling rodents. And they're highly toxic, they're specifically designed to control rats and mice, and also they're relatively easy to use. But the problem is, it's not just the target rodents that are affected by rodenticides, it's other wildlife as well, non-target wildlife. Rodenticides are indiscriminate, so they can enter the food chain and they can affect a wide range of wildlife. And probably one of the best known routes of exposure of rodenticides to wildlife is where rats and mice, they consume, they directly feed on the bait, consume the bait, and then the rodenticides are designed to be slow acting so that they don't induce bait shyness. So a rat or a mouse that has these toxins in their system can still be moving around for days afterwards, even if they've ingested a lethal dose. And obviously during that time, they can be susceptible to be taken by a predator or by a scavenger. And then that's what's called secondary poisoning, where a predator takes a rat or a mouse that is contaminated and these toxins accumulate in the food chain and accumulate in top predators. So these are the contents of barn owl pellets, so essentially what barn owls have been feeding on. And these are all small mammals. And over the course of life of barn owl, they'll consume hundreds of these small mammals. And if you consider the chances of so even a small number of these small mammals being exposed to rodenticides, that's a very high likelihood. And we've seen that in tests of barn owls, with that, Irish barn owls, we've seen that over 88% of them have rodenticides in their systems. And it's a common misconception to think that rodenticide bait that's well placed and that's covered doesn't pose a risk to wildlife. And unfortunately, th this is simply not the case. It's not just the target species, brown rat and house mouse, that can take directly feed on the bait. And we know that all of our other small mammal species in Ireland can enter bait stations and can consume rodenticide bait. So that species like wood mice, bank foals, greater white-toothed shrew, pygmy shrew, and that's very worrying in itself, but also if we think of the different predators and scavengers that can take these small mammals, that list is very long, and that means that all these species are susceptible to being exposed to rodenticides. And it gets even worse. We now know that other animals can directly feed on rodenticide bait and some species of wildlife that we may not consider. The likes of beetles and slugs, they can enter bait stations, they can take bait. And it's obviously really worrying if rodenticides are entering the food chain at the lower levels, then the pathway of exposure and the range of wildlife species that can be exposed to these toxins is vast. And we see this in species like peregrine falcon. They're a top predator, but they primarily feed on birds, on small and medium-sized birds. But we've seen that peregrine falcon are exposed to rodenticides in Ireland. And they're likely picking them up from songbirds, from small birds that are picking them up from invertebrates and other means. So we can see that it's not just the species, the predators that feed on rats and mice that are exposed to rodenticides. So we need to accept that whenever we use rodenticides, we are posing a risk to wildlife. And we need to go to that extra effort to change our mindsets and change our practices and to use rodenticides as a last resort and not just as a first convenient option.